Lloyd Weezy has been crafting a wide variety of cedar and steamer trunks, keepsake and special moment boxes for many years. For Weezy, there's character in the wood and a natural personality that he tries to reveal in each piece he crafts. As you can see, the grain is so pretty on this. I always enjoyed working with my father on the farm, uh, throwing, you know, slinging the hammer. But the tight knots, the little tight, darker knots, is what blends with the top. So I'm going to go with this for that reason. Uh, we all like to destroy stuff, but I always like to rebuild with my dad. That was my first interest, really, in working with wood. I had to have a hobby, uh, something of self-gratification. I read in the paper one night that uh, this gentleman had uh, out on the farm had some wood that he was trying to get rid of. Went out there, loaded up. It was uh, basswood is what it was. I brought a big load home and made a dry sink, a hutch, uh, made a little table, and had a, a fairly nice finish on it. I was just learning, just doing things. And my wife came out and said, that's really nice but I don't have a place for something like that in our house. <laughs> I'm gonna set it up this way. So, uh, I took it on myself to go to um, a consignment place. And before the end of the week, they gave me a call and said, you wanna bring some more items in, everything is sold. So I called the gentleman up out on the farm and I said, could I buy the rest of that basswood from you? Then I went and tried a trunk and I took that into the consignment and I had a gentleman that bought the trunk actually call up and ask me if I'd build him another trunk. Ended up building him his trunk, took it to him, and he asked me if, he'd, if I could build him another one. Kind of dawned on me, Lloyd, trunks are used everywhere from the attic to the basement. But I had to learn how to build the trunks and build the trunks where I felt comfortable with them too. My in intent was to get into an intarsia, relief carving, wood burning, all of that onto my trunks to make them unique and special. And my basic construction, because my trunks will have a tray, my trunks will have a bottom in it. I'll build the bottoms with three quarter inch cedar and I'll make the tray with cedar. Therefore, I don't have to put cedar lining into it. To build something that somebody thinks that they want, you're hoping they're describing what they do want, and you're hoping you're understanding what they want. My customers are my best sellers. Uh, I'm not a seller. I'm just a maker. I make sawdust. I've had gentlemen come into my booth and become carnival barkers. You have to come into this booth. You have to see what this fella is making. Last year, my daughter and I were at the show, and my daughter went through every little chest and little you know, item that he had, and I could tell she really loved what he had created. So we came down here today looking for this booth so that we could buy her one for her birthday. So I sell a lot of trunks that aren't personalized with all of the things that I would like to put on it, they're just pretty pieces of furniture. The handcrafted work by an individual, um, it's so much more sturdy, and it just means so much more to me than getting it off of a, fact, you know, a furniture store and off of an assembly line. I just think there's just so much more personality put into their, their craft, and I just feel when I look at that piece of wood, it's not just wood, it's art. It's very time consuming to more or less try to identify my woods, my grains and everything, tying it to what the person really is wanting and making sure that the product gets to that point. Some of my walnut trunks will have a white walnut running through it or sometimes even a sapwood or sometimes a gray wood running through it. Adds a lot of character. People like character. I like character in, in grains. I have an order right now, uh, a person from Pennsylvania. He says, you're the artist, 
you make it the way you want to. I'm going to do a trial assemble. The little treasure box, first the lid. My first initial intent was to make something that had no hardware to it and it was two-toned out of two different woods. It can be uh, a bird's eye meal, it can be anything, it can be cedar. And I'll see a grain that just says, hey, look at me, but I've only got one board. I pull that off to the side and that becomes a keepsake. I can make the whole keepsake out of that one board and keep the theme all exactly the same on that keepsake. And then everybody can enjoy what I was seeing with that piece of wood and keep that theme in there. My wife is my biggest critic. Anything I build has to pass the dust drag test. If the rag doesn't go across it without catching on anything, you're okay. If there's a rough spot anywhere, you gotta get that out. It's gotta be smooth. Building for somebody else something, yes, I've put a lot of thought into it, but I never put it out the door unless I wouldn't keep it myself, so. Not this show. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008 the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.